All information contained in this podcast is general in nature and does not consider your individual circumstances. You should consider the appropriateness of this information with regards to your individual objectives, financial situation, and needs. Welcome to Sharing More Than The Sheets, a podcast to help you and your partner make better financial and lifestyle decisions so that you can both focus on the things that you love. I'm your host, Michael Curry, financial planner, green thumb, husband, and just dad. Hi, and welcome to this week's episode of Sharing More Than The Sheets. Today, we're going to be talking about structure, budgeting, and ways to actually do it. So we're going to sort of dig deep and talk about some of the ways that I've seen work and some of those that sort of don't work as well. And probably the biggest things that people are scared of when it comes to the B word, budgeting. So first of all, what I just want to explain is that when most people think of budgeting, the first thing they think of is spreadsheets, Excel sheets, um, Excel spreadsheets, pages and pages of lines, something that's complicated, something that needs to be monitored every single day, going to the shops thinking, okay, we've got $46.20 to spend on groceries this week, things like that. And while this is what some people actually do, from experience, it doesn't work the majority of the time. Um, it may work for a week, it may work for two weeks, it might even work for two months. But what I've found is as soon as things get crazy or busy in their lives, as it, as they do with most couples and families, it just all falls to pieces because it just involves too much effort. It involves too much brain power, it involves too many hours in the day or the week to make sure that this budget, which is amazing and was put together down to the dollar, is working. So what I'm going to do today is sort of share what I've seen works really well and just some tips that I think that you'll be able to go away and implement. You may not implement everything that we talk about. You may implement it in different ways. Different things work for different people. Different things work for different couples. I guess the first way that I see people manage their money is they literally just don't spend anything, you know, and to an extent that works in some cases where some people are literally frugal they just buy the minimum groceries, they pay the bills they have to pay, and they just save everything else. And these people actually end up saving a lot of money, if not more than anyone else. But unfortunately, this is only, I would say, 5% of the population, if that. The other part about it is that these people normally have very simple lives. They don't have many bills. Um, Sometimes it could be someone that's single, Um, that has very good self-control. Sometimes it could be a couple with no children that have a very good surplus or even somebody with children that has a very good surplus but are just very, very good at managing their money. The matter of the fact is that we are humans. As humans, we have emotions. With emotions, we love sales. We love online shopping. We love eBay. We love Gumtree. We love Facebook Marketplace. We love seeing deals and bargains. We love spending money. We get hungry. You know, the worst thing is going to the shops and doing a grocery shopping on an empty stomach because you'll just put every single thing you see in the trolley. With these emotions and with these feelings come human error, come mistakes, come overspending. So this is where the structure comes in that I was touching on in our previous episode. And the best tip I can give you, first of all, is to find a bank or even the bank that you have now. See if you can set up multiple bank accounts. Now, most people normally have multiple bank accounts, they just don't use them. And the idea is for your first account to be a bills account. And this is going to be an account literally just for bills. And all bills will come out of this account, be it mortgage payments, rent, debt payments, um, car insurance, phone bills, electricity, car registration, servicing, tires, school fees. So bills, even if they're due every three, six or 12 months, they all come out of this bills account. That's just for bills. The second account is a spendings account. And this is the account that you use for everyday spending, be it fuel, fuel, haircuts, movies, grocery shopping, petrol, going out on weekends. Everything that you physically pay for on a weekly basis, for example, would come out of the spendings account. The third account is your savings account. And this would be part of a savings plan that normally an advisor would put together for you. And best practice in this situation is to have this somewhere where you can't see it, somewhere where you can't touch it. 
And I'll sort of touch back on that later and I'll sort of explain to you why I've mentioned that. And your fourth account is your emergency fund where normally you'd put money in there for a rainy day. The way it works is every time you get paid, for example, you would put X amount into the bills account and that's the bill sorted. You wouldn't, you don't even need to think about when your bills are due because literally half of them will just come out as direct debits. And the other ones, when the bill comes in, the money's already there. Rego comes in, the money should be there. If it's done properly, that is. So that's the bills. And religiously, the idea is in the bills account to put X amount away into that account where no one can touch it, essentially. And the whole point is not to touch it. Your second account is your spendings account, where you give yourself an amount to live off for the week or the fortnight or the month, where if you run out, you run out. This, this is easily the hardest account to stick to, but it's the one where, as you can tell, is probably the most important to stick to because this is where things get a little bit crazy. And the idea is to give yourself an amount to live off. Now, it should be enough because if you're if you do this well or if your advisor does it well with you, it will factor in all your expenses. As I said, from Tic Tacs to haircuts to going out together on weekends, taking the kids out. The whole point of a budget isn't to sacrifice your lifestyle and what you do. So if you want to go out once a week as a family, twice a week as a family and have a dinner, factor that into the budget. Whatever it is, factor it into the budget. The whole point is just to have a limit because the issue is when you don't have a limit, it's very easy to go over. You can go over by $1,000 to be honest with you in some cases and you wouldn't even realize you've gone over if you had all your accounts just all put together. So by having a spendings account, you literally give yourself a limit to spend for that week, fortnight or month. And as I said, if you run out, you run out. A really, a massive advantage of having this type of account is that let's say you pay yourself fortnightly just for argument's sake. Let's say it's, let's say it's a thousand dollars a month, a thousand dollars a fortnight. If it passes week one, Let's say you're on your on the, your seventh day, for example, and you have only four hundred dollars left in your account, or three hundred. You straight away have a bit of a mental note that you need to sort of just take it easy for the next week because you're sort of over the point where you should be. It's like mobile phone data, you know, when you give when you're given X amount gigs with the company that I'm with. When I go on my app, I can see that I'm seventy percent through the month, and I've used ninety percent of my data, for example. So that just gives me a bit of a reminder to just take it easy until the next billing period. So same thing with this. It gives yourself that reminder. You'll know you've gone over because your balance will be zero. You'll have nothing in there. And again, that's so powerful compared to having everything in the one account where all your bills and all your spendings is all coming out of the same place where you wouldn't know if you've gone over by a dollar or a thousand dollars or a hundred dollars. So having that limit is important. Now, if you're constantly going over that limit, the idea is just to give yourself more money, you know, just have a limit, just have a cap that you're both comfortable using. Another thing with the spendings account, if you can have it as a joint account, which isn't easy for everyone. And some couples prefer to have their privacy, which is fine. But if you can have it as a joint account, it will give you twice as much accountability because that way you really can't hide what you're doing from the other person. And if one person does something silly, the other person's definitely going to find out about it. For some couples, however, having a joint account isn't as easy. So I'll leave that with you two to sort of work out. But if you can have a joint, as I said, it does give you more accountability. Your fourth account is, sorry, your third account is your savings account. So this is the one for your savings. This is part of your savings plan, be it for a holiday, renovations, another house property. And... The idea is to have this in an account which is separate to your bank, like a high interest account, for example, with someone completely different. Or if you have it there and you maybe have it sitting on your mortgage or an offset account or something like that, you have it somewhere where you can't see it. Now, the reason for this, first of all, if you can't see it, you're less likely to touch it. The second thing is that it's a psychological, there's a reason behind it psychologically, if that makes any sense. And it's this. If you logged into your internet banking and you saw, say, $5,000, dollars $30,000 just sitting in your savings account, you're going to be completely different in the way that you spend your money compared to if you were to log into your internet banking and see $100 sitting there. 
So the idea is to take that away from yourself so that you can't see it. Because the problem is if you do see it there every time you log into your internet banking, you're going to feel a lot more comfortable financially. And being a lot more comfortable, you're more likely to spend more money. You're more, more likely to see something on sale and be like, you know what, it's okay. We've got all these savings in the bank. It's okay if we spend this. Or it's okay if we just go on that holiday. We deserve this holiday. Let's go on that holiday. Compared to if you couldn't see that money there, you'll basically forget it exists. And emotionally, you won't be as comfortable to just go and spend money, you know, and you'll think twice before spending money on things that you wouldn't normally spend your money on. Now, just to drop a disclaimer, I'm human. My wife is human. We are human. So everything that I'm explaining to you while I'm a financial advisor and while I talk to people about these issues every single day of the week, nearly, everything I've explained in this podcast episode we do. Probably 80% of it, I would say, we do. So, and the reason I say that, and the point I'm trying to make is it doesn't matter how much self-control you may have or intelligence or experience or whatever it may be, these tips are so important and this structure is so important to be able to get anywhere financially for most people. Again, I don't want to generalize, but I'm telling you, most people that I've met, most couples that I've seen, need to be doing something along this line, along these lines, to have some sort of structure, to have something in place instead of just having everything coming in and out of the one account. So, and as I said to you, we are human, I'm human, I make mistakes. And the idea is to hide money from yourself essentially so that you don't see it there, so that you don't accidentally spend it or you don't feel emotionally comfortable to the point where you go and do things where you probably shouldn't be doing them and then you regret them six months later. So hopefully that side of things helps as well. These podcasts have been brought to you by Better Financial Planning Australia. To book a free 15-minute phone chat, visit betterfinancialplanning.com.au. The last account is the emergency fund. And the idea is every time you get paid, you'd put X amount into the bills account, and that's the bills all sorted. You don't even need to think about it ever again, essentially, until the next month, because the bills should all just come out, or the next pay period. Your second is your spendings account, where you give yourself an amount to live off, where if you run out, you run out. Your third is your savings account, which is money that's being tucked away somewhere where you can't see it, and that's working towards your savings goal. And the last account is your emergency fund. And that is essentially the emergency fund, money, whatever's left over would go there, or whatever's left over would go towards some sort of strategy. And this is where you need to have proper financial advice or talk to someone that can provide you with proper financial advice to have a strategy as to where that money goes because it may go into an emergency fund, it may go towards investments, it might go towards paying off debt, it may go towards a few different things. And as we've mentioned at the start of this podcast, all this information is general in nature because everyone's circumstance is completely different. Somebody that has a smaller surplus then someone else is going to structure their budget completely differently to how I've just explained it. Somebody that's in a deficit, which means they've got more in, ex, more expenses than income, they're going to structure things completely different. Somebody that has a humongous surplus and has a lot of money left over, they're going to structure things very different. Somebody that has investment properties are going to structure things very differently. Somebody that has an offset account may structure things differently to somebody that doesn't have an offset account. So this structure that I've just given you, this example is very, very general. But the point that I wanted to make today with this podcast episode is to show you how important structure is, to show you how important it is to have some sort of system that you follow. Now, this system may not be easy to begin with because you're going to have to be changing direct debits, maybe changing banks. If there's a couple, one of you is going to have to maybe change banks for the other person, you know, or to use a different spendings account or whatever it may be, but I promise you it will be worth it in the end. If you do the structure or sorry, if you have a structure and you put it in place, it will, apart from helping you save money, as I've said in my previous episode, it will make your life so much easier. And moving forward, you literally just do the same thing every fortnight, every month, and everything just works. Now on that point, Like anything, it does need to be monitored because expenses do change. So the whole point is to make sure it's still working. But as you can tell, once you've done the hard yards, once you've done the work at the start, it's so much easier to just, you know, to to adjust and tweak when it needs to be adjusted, when it needs to be tweaked. Now, some banks out there will give you multiple sub-accounts 
for free. They won't charge you for them. Some give you online accounts and they don't charge you much, if any, anything for them. Um, so it's important to talk to your bank, um, look around, see what's out there to have a bank that gives you some sort of structure. And, and as I said, to really get some financial advice because everyone's situation is completely different. And uh, as I said, if you've got a mortgage, you'd want to talk to your bank or your lender about having some sort of offset account, for example. And we'll talk about that in some future episodes and what an offset account actually is, as well as the most effective way to use an offset account. So I hope today's helped. Um, and as I said, it's the, the biggest disclaimer that I can drop is that everyone's situation is different and a budget that works for one person may not work for another. But the most important thing to take away is to have some sort of structure. And secondly, to have some sort of structure that isn't too complicated. Um, what I've explained today is not rocket science. Um, it's not, it's nothing too groundbreaking. It's not, you know, it's nothing that you need to write a book about. You know, you have to read a book about to, to understand how it works. It's very, very simple. But it's just having something there. It's just having a structure in place, something to follow and something that isn't too complicated. Because if it's too complicated, like those massive Excel sheets that I was talking about at the start of this episode, or those budgets that need to be monitored every day or every week, you're setting yourself up for failure. You're setting yourself up to crash and burn. Whereas if it's something simple, both of you are going to be able to stick to it. Both of you are going to be a lot more likely to work together on it and to believe in what you're doing compared to something that's just ridiculously complicated that one person loves and is obsessed with and the other person thinks is the most silliest thing they've ever seen. There are some systems out there where somebody would put away, for example, a percentage of their income into different accounts or different buckets, as some may call them. The issue that I've seen with that is somebody, for example, could be putting away $1,000 into an account when really they should be putting away $800 into an account or $1,200, you know. So the issue there is that you could be saving more than you should be saving or putting more into an account or the opposite, you know, putting a lot less than you potentially could be or you could be saving a lot less than you potentially could be saving. The other part about it as well is to make sure that when you create a budget or any budget that you use figures that are accurate because if you work with crap, you're going to get crap. Go through your accounts. Look at how much you're actually spending. If you need to slightly over-exaggerate something, it's okay because you'd better be safe than sorry. But look at the actual figures. Another big mistake that I see, I met this lady once, this was about seven, eight years ago, when I saw her. She had this really complicated budget. It worked. It looked like it worked, right? And she had formulas, she had figures, she had projections, all these things on this Excel sheet. It had like it had eight different pages to it. But she just said things just aren't working. She just couldn't figure out what it was that wasn't working. I looked at it and it didn't take me long to figure out what was happening. Her monthly bills, to work what they were at fortnightly, she was literally just halving them. And the issue with that is that some months have more weeks than others. And it isn't much of a difference, but overall it makes a very, very, very big difference. So just to give you a, an idea as to how the, the best way to calculate it. If something, for example, is $40 a month, to work out what that is per week, the easiest thing is to multiply it by 12 to work it out, to work out whatever that figure is for the year, and then divide it by 52. That way, you're getting a more accurate figure as to how much you should, in, you should be putting away per week into that account, for example. And as I said, it doesn't make much of a difference, but when you add up all your bills together, you want some sort of consistency as to how they're calculated so that it actually works, so that there's just some method behind the madness instead of just roughly dividing things by two. So it's the way it's it's calculated, um, which, which really is important on that side of things. Um, and as I said, using actual figures, going through your expenses, going through your bank accounts, just making sure that you've, you've accounted for all your expenses. Otherwise, you can have the best budget in the world or the most, you know, structured setup. But if the figures in there aren't correct, it's just going to get you nowhere. And one last point that I want to leave with everyone is that budgets never work exactly the way they're supposed to work. If you say, I'm going to spend $900 every fortnight on X, Y, and Z, there are going to be weeks you go over that. There are going to be weeks things happen, you know emergencies pop up out of out of the blue expenses pop up things happen um so nothing will ever work 
100% the way it is supposed to work when it comes to budgeting. But having a budget is better than having no budget. And if you have some sort of structure, it's very easy to figure out where things are going wrong, where things are going right, and what you need to do to get back on track if you ever fall off track. And budgets need to be monitored, as I said earlier. Have an Excel spreadsheet just sitting on your desktop. Have it sitting somewhere. We can monitor it. We monitor our clients' situations annually, at least, um, from an, you know, an overall financial perspective. But you should be sitting down at least every month, if not every two months, at least, and just looking at your budget, just making sure it all looks right. Things are on track. Yes, this is working. That's working. If it's not, figure out why it isn't. My clients, I ask them just to call me. If something's not working, just call me. We'll sit down. We'll look at it. We'll figure out what's going on. Because sometimes it takes another set of eyes to look at something and actually realize what's actually happening. So budget's never going to work. Don't. And I'm saying this because I don't want you to get discouraged. That is another big part of this puzzle. With most couples, as I said, as, as I said in our last episode, one person is sometimes more passionate about the other. And that's very, very normal. And when things don't go right, when the budget doesn't work, I hear it a lot where one person will say, I told you so, or I told you this wasn't going to work to begin with, or I told you this was a silly idea. We shouldn't have done this. We shouldn't have done that. And suddenly the person that was negative about the whole idea of budgeting sort of ends up being right. And that's not a very good formula in any relationship, especially for that person that was wrong. (laughs) But if you go into this knowing that it's never not going to be perfect straight away and that you need to work on it together, in that it's going to take some tweaking, it's going to make things so much easier, and you're going to be a lot less likely to be discouraged. You're going to be a lot less likely to be upset and think, you know what, it's just too hard and throw in the towel. So structure, have something simple, don't get discouraged, expect things to not be perfect. And as I said, having a budget, having some sort of structure is better than having nothing. And if you can seek financial advice, if you can talk to someone, it will be highly in your best, it will really, really be in your best interest so that you can make sure that what it is is appropriate to your circumstance. Because as I said, everyone's situation is completely different. So thank you for listening. I hope you enjoyed this episode. I hope you got something out of it. You know, not everything I've explained may be for you, but if you can get something out of it and take that away, implement it, then I've done my job. Thank you for listening. Thanks for joining us on Sharing More Than The Sheets. Please make sure you subscribe to be updated with future episode releases. Please visit us at sharingmorethanthesheets.com.au to submit questions or requests for future podcast topics. These podcasts have been brought to you by Better Financial Planning Australia. To book a 15-minute phone chat, visit betterfinancialplanning.com.au.